Honey, are you sure your rib's not broken? No, it's just a little sore, that's all. I'm just sorry that I didn't get to sing at Michael's opening. Your singing's the least of it. You could have been killed. I'm going down to the station to ask to press charges against Grand. Oh, no. Ray, don't. I mean, he was very apologetic. Yeah, well, apologies don't cut it. Not when the man leaves a faulty elevator unattended. It was my fault. I should have seen the out-of-order sign. I don't believe this. You're defending the guy? I just know how difficult it is to run a business. There's so many things to think about that you can't always stay on top of it all. Yeah, running a hotel is a lot different than working at home and designing clothes. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, she is, but she's not able to come to the phone right now. Rip, I can talk on the phone. I'm not an invalid. Are you sure about that? Well, there must be some kind of mistake. You need to talk to Rob Carnal. Uh, please, let me talk. Thank you. Hi, yes, this is Delala Garrison. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, something came up today. I, I couldn't make it. Can you deliver those chairs on Thursday? Great, thank you. I'll be there then. Bye. What's going on, Delala? Well, when Rob left for Europe, he asked me to manage the club for him. And uh, well, I told him that I would. What? It's out of the question, Delilah. You tell Rob to go find someone else. Sarah. You don't have to thank me. Don't you know? I'll always be here for you. Want to go and see your dad now? Yeah, now that you're here with me. Amazing, isn't it? Maybe we should go back out. No, it's okay. I want to be with him. Even if there's nothing I can say or do, no, no, I just. No, no, listen, listen. It's going to be okay. I just have to be strong for him. Daddy. No tears, sweetheart. No need to fall apart. Not now. Now, before we begin today's session, I want to make one thing clear. I will not tolerate any further outbursts. I apologize for yesterday, Your Honor. It won't happen again. And you have my word, Your Honor, no matter what the provocation is, I have no reason to lose my cool today, not now. Fine words, Miss Medina. I hope we can all live by them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin. Gabrielle, she seems so collected compared to yesterday. I don't know. It's like she went through a complete transformation overnight. Dad, I want you to just lie back. Yeah, you need your rest, Roger. We can come back later. I don't miss a chance to spend time with my daughter. No thanks, Bo. I want to hold on to every precious moment. Daddy, please. I've, I've had a great life, Sarah. And if this is my time, well, better to go in style, without regrets, or anyway, as few as possible. And I don't intend to lie back and wax philosophical while my eyes close. I know there's still hope, slim as it is. Then why do we have to sit here and talk about death? Well, talking about it takes away the fear and mystery. Death becomes another adventure. <laughs> I'd hope to delay it, but if it has to be now, well, then I can live with it. <laughs> of course. I won't exactly be living with it, will I? <laughs> Daddy, stop, okay? Sarah, I refuse to get down in the dumps about this. You and Megan and Victoria and everybody else have to get on with your lives. You understand that, don't you, Bo? I need my family and my friends to stop worrying about me. I want these last days to be filled with hope, not remorse. Roger, uh, if I was in your place, I just wish I could be half as strong as you are. You're an old man. Thanks, but <laughs> right now I'm feeling all too mortal, I'm afraid. Okay, well, you need your rest, all right? Bo and I are just going to go wait out now. No, wait. No, 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 no. I'd like a few words with my daughter in private. I gotta get back over to the studio and look at those uh, Michael Grand Hotel opening tapes. I'll see you at Waterside, okay? Okay. I'm gonna be fine. No, 
I never doubted that. You take care, Roger. You too, Bob. Of Sarah, as well as yourself. Okay. It's you and me now, kid. It's like the old days when we used to have our talks in the den. There wasn't anything we couldn't say to each other. I hope that's still true. I already promised Rob that I would, and I can't let him down. He's in Europe right now, and he's got enough trouble with his clubs there. Well, you just give him a call and unpromise it. I can't, Rafe. He's depending on me. So is Sammy. How could you agree to something like this? God, you're making such a big deal about this whole thing. You work days and nights. When I go to the club, I will put Sammy in bed, and then I will have the whole day to spend with her. You know, you always do this. You dive in head first without thinking, and now you're obligated to manage a nightclub. Rafe, I'm going to be singing anyway. What difference does it make? The difference is the responsibility. It doesn't end when you come off stage. You're going to have to worry about the employees, the, the liquor, the troublemakers. Okay, okay, I get your point. So you're going to give him a call? No! I want to do this. It's important to me. Even if it hurts our marriage. Oh, that's a great attitude. What kind of marriage do we have anyway? Well, I always have to compromise all of my dreams. It's not fair, Rafe. Stop it. Just stop it. Why do you have to fight all the time? Oh, honey, we weren't fighting. We were just having a little disagreement. Grown-ups do that all the time. <sighs> of course they do, honey. You know, it's... <laughs> you know, like when you're friends and you, you, you get into arguments on the playground, it's the same with us. It's not the same. Wendy's mom and dad used to fight, and now they're divorced. Honey, we're not going to get divorced. Your mommy and I love each other, Sammy. So did Wendy's mom and dad. Sammy, all I can tell you is your mother and I aren't getting a divorce. Not now, not ever. I promise. I promise. Tell you what, we're already late for school. Why don't you grab your lunchbox and your books, and I'll, I'll drive you in the squad car. You like that, don't you? It's OK. I'll put the red light on top. Come on, pumpkin, scoot. There you go. We're a couple of lousy liars. How can we tell her that we weren't fighting when it's obvious that we were? I hate it. It's bad enough when we're alone, but losing our tempers when she's around. I know we have to be more careful. Yeah, well, that's, that's treating the symptom, not the cause. And Sammy's right. Sometimes she sees things more clearly than we do. Every time she sees us together lately, which isn't very often, we're, we're at each other's throats. Oh, that's my fault, too? I'm not blaming you, but... Delilah, how could you make a promise to Rob like that without considering the complications? Are we going back to that again? Rafe, I'm so sick of making these compromises for you. It's not I'm not, not talking fair. about compromise. I'm talking about... Just, I told him that I would take care... with me, all right? I told him that I would do this, and it's not right for you to but make you me do, do something that I don't to want to first, do. Delilah, you never discuss anything with me anymore. I'm... Mr. Russell, do you wish to continue your line of questioning from yesterday? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Very well. Miss Medina, would you take the stand? Stay cool. Oh, I will. It's a brand new day. Miss Medina, may I remind you you're still under oath? Yes, Your Honor, but I have no reason to lie now. Would you look at her? It's pure ice water. Miss Medina, you've gone to great lengths to portray yourself as a very loving and devoted mother. Uh, objection. Your Honor, could we do without the sarcasm? Oh, I, I beg your pardon, Your Honor. If Mr. Lovelace doesn't want me to refer to his client as a loving and devoted mother, well, that's fine by me. Very funny, Mr. Russell. Get on with it. Miss Medina, as a loving and devoted mother, you must spend all of your time with your son. I try to, but I have to work to provide for him, give him the necessities. Well, of course. And uh, do you take your son with you to your place of business at those times? Certainly not. Unlike his father, I believe that his, his proper place is in his home, his real home. Oh, I see. So you hire a babysitter? Yes, from time to time. From, from time to time. Your Honor, I would like to ask the sheriff to call the ladies in waiting outside. Hold it. What's going on? I merely want to corroborate Miss Medina's testimony. I have nothing to hide. The sheriff will open the doors.
And do you recognize these ladies? Yes, I've used them to sit for Al. All three of them? Yes, I don't see that it's unusual for a working mother to use a network of sitters. Oh, what a nice way to put it. Uh, sure. So, you're on network, or are we getting into your affiliates now? I have used these ladies from... Time from time to time, yes. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to call the other three ladies in. Your Honor, really? Mr. Russell, just how many baby sitters are you planning to parade before us? That's up to you. Six are sufficient. You've made your point. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much, ladies. Your Honor, in the interest of time, I will refrain from calling any more babysitters to the stand. As you so kindly put it, we've made our point. Miss Medina, for all your talk of being the only constant in little Al's life, there's really nothing very constant about you, Miss Your Honor, how long is he going to get away with this? As long as I deem his questions appropriate. Now, sit down, Mr. Lovelace. Miss Medina, is it in Al's best interest to be taken care of, not by his mother, but by a never-ending parade of your, your friends and your neighbors? I mean, does, does poor little Al even remember their faces or, or, or their names? Al knows that his mother loves him very, very much and that she takes care of him when she has to be away from the home. Not all of us have rich friends to bail us out. Well, then again, some of us do. If you're referring to me, I have worked very hard for everything I've got. No question. You've worked very hard for Michael Grant, your own rich friend. The two of you have cut a swath through many good lives here in Landview. Or perhaps you really? have forgotten about your efforts to destroy the reputation of Holden Towers, that disease that came and went so quickly that enabled Michael Grant to buy that hotel at a fraction of its value. Objection! Does Mr. Russell have any proof to back up this outrageous oh, claim? Oh, come on, Lovelace. What do you want, a lap culture with her name on it? How about a witness? She's the only witness that I need. I suppose it was just a coincidence that she was hired as the highly paid manager of that hotel after Michael Graham bought it, with virtually no experience no. as a hotel manager. Oh, this is slander, pure slander. All God. right, all, yeah. all right, gentlemen, all right. Let's tone down the histrionics. Mr. Russell, I do not take kindly to allegations that can't be supported. Your Honor, there are several witnesses who can testify to this woman's character, or lack of it specifically to her involvement in the kidnapping of Mrs. Victoria Buchanan, a kidnapping that almost caused her death. Oh, now, this is really too extreme. First of all, my client is portrayed as waging germ warfare to take over a hotel, and now she's a kidnapper? Where's the proof? Well, Mr. Russell? Well, unfortunately, none of the witnesses are able to appear at this time. However, I do have one witness who will testify to the assertions that I made yesterday that Gabrielle Medina did try to murder her own husband, Steve Holden. What? There. Mm. Are you sure you're okay? Yes, I'm fine. Okay. Did you come down here just to change my bandage? No, I came by. I wanted to see you, but um, I'm on my way to court. I'm going to testify against Gabrielle's fitness as oh, a mother man, today. Why, come on. Why? Why you? There's got to be a thousand other people who come out of the woodwork Yeah, well, to a thousand other people her. don't know the things that I do. You remember what I told you when Steve was in a coma? He said somebody came into his room, tried to smother him with a pillow, and that person was Gabrielle. I remember, of course, sir. How can I forget that? But if Steve's not there to make the accusation in if his own Steve words... If Steve were here, he would be in court next to his brother, but he's not, so I'm going to testify Brenda, for him on, today. Come on, you're, you're upset just thinking about taking of the stand. Of course I'm upset, Larry. A part of me hasn't forgiven or forgotten Gabrielle for all the pain that she caused Steve and me, but a part of me knows that she loves that child in her own way. So what can you do? What I have to do. No matter how much she loves that child, I think in the long run, she's going to do that baby more harm than good. She's going to have to take what's coming to her sooner or later, and I think that time is now. Daddy, this isn't such a good time to talk, okay? I think you need your rest. No, no, no. I've waited too long as it is, sweetheart. Uh, I need to say this now. I love you, sweetheart. Daddy, I... I want you to know this before it's too late. I love you 
every bit as much as I love Megan. I don't have to explain this to you. Listen, I always felt that you were stronger than your sister. I just took it for granted that she needed more reassuring, more time. If I seemed to pay more attention to her, I never meant to slight you. I know, it's okay, Arthur. No, 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 it isn't. Not if I hurt you. That's the last thing that I, that I meant to do. So now, even if it's too late to make up for my mistake, you must know that I love you. Always. Danny, I love you oh, so much. Wait, no, no. Now look. Now your sister, though, has me worried. Megan's fine. You're the one who matters right no, now. No, no. She may, she may seem to be all right, but I know that she's going through a very, oh, hard time with Victoria. And with Max. I get the impression that things are good with you and Bo. Yeah, I'm crazy about him. <laughs> I think he feels the same way about me. Smart fellow. I'm so happy for you, sweetheart. Makes it so much easier. No, maybe you're right. Maybe I do need some rest. Why don't you go meet Bo? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll be back later. This is going to be my lucky day. Huston. Yes, here I am, right. Master of all, jack of none, you know the story. God, it is just such a, a nice surprise to see you. Well, believe me, it's certainly a surprise to see you. Oh, you, you hadn't heard the good news, had you? You see, my, my Uncle Asa had sort of a, a change of heart. I've been sort of hired full on to take care of the estate. Congratulations. Yeah. That's great. Well, it'll be nice to have you around here a little longer. Oh. Well, thank you, ma'am. It'd be real nice to be here. Well, if you'll excuse me. I'll see you later. I, I just cannot get over running into you like this. It, it sort of makes a body believe in fate. Well, you have an interesting way of looking at coincidence. Oh, no, no. I never did believe in coincidences. You see, I've been carrying around this little present here in my pocket, just hoping I'd be running into you real soon. Oh, no, no. It's for, it's for Tugger. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's got his name right here on the oh, collar. Oh, Austin, thank you. It's really adorable. Yeah. <laughs> I don't plan on ever letting that little guy far from my sight, but if uh, I ever do, now I know I'll never lose him. Sarah, well, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I know it's just a silly little dog collar, but it just got me thinking about losing someone precious. Sir, what's 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 wrong? You you, you can tell me. No, it's really nothing, Austin, that you need to know about. Sarah, now listen to me. If it worries you, it's something that can concern me too. It's just that someone I'm very close to me just has me upset. That's all. Who? Now you just tell me who that rat is, and I swear. Austin, to you. I'd I'd really rather not talk about it if you don't mind. Really. It's Bo, isn't it? Sarah. Bo. Got over here as soon as I could, oh. Austin. Look, Sarah's upset. Thanks for keeping an eye on her. I'll take it from here. Like hell you will. Brenda, I understand why you want to go I, testify. I have to. But I can't allow this Larry, to happen. Larry, No, I... listen, listen to me. Look at you right here in the office, how upset you are. Don't you think it might just relieve me a little bit to go in there and testify about what I know in front of the court? Yeah, I possibly, do. but I just don't think the trade-off is worth it, and I think you, you know that what I'm saying makes sense. But what about John and Max? I promised them that I would be there, and I'm not going to let them down. And no one says you have to let them down. I've got an idea. Look, you dictate your statement to me. We'll have it notarized. We'll send it down to John at the courthouse. And I'm sure this is just as effective for him to use as uh, your own presence would be. How come you always know what to do? 
Well, look, first of all, you see these uh, diplomas up here? They only give yes. these to guys who really know what to do. And I think they gave it to the right guy that time. Mm. Thanks. <laughs> Your Honor, I knew that I was supposed to keep my composure. I said I would, but this is ridiculous. When Steve died, I was devastated. I cannot sit here and have accusations that I tried to kill him. They're all lies. Sit down, Miss Please, Medina. Please, Your Honor. Miss Medina, I know how you feel about Mr. Russell's accusations, but it's not... more than an accusation. Max, that yeah. will be better right. from you, Mr. Holmes. Right. Max, Fred is at the old must see. He told me how you tried to kill him in his sleep. You that... said it yourself. He was having hallucinations. Stop. 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 Stop it. Now, that is enough. If you two don't learn to control yourselves, I will have Al Holden declared a ward of the Commonwealth and settle it that way. Max, he needs it. Now sit down. I'm sorry, Your Honor. My apologies, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Russell, if you have this so-called witness, bring him or her forward. Your Honor, I can support every word of my claim as soon as Nurse Brenda McGillis arrives. In the meantime, we only have your word to go on, so you will cease this ill-advised portrait of the witness. Now, is that clear? Crystal clear, Your Honor. However, my portrait is far from complete. You see, I still have a witness who's going to testify to the character of the real Gabrielle Medina. just received word that Brenda McGillis is still too ill to appear in court. Yep, that's one for our side. However, her sworn deposition will be arriving here shortly. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll rule on admissibility at that time. Will that be all, counsel? No. No, as I told you, I have another witness who will testify as to Gabrielle Medina's character and her fitness as a mother. Mm-hmm. Not another babysitter? No, no, hardly. William Lester's been accused of many things, but uh, fondness for children, no. What? What's the matter? <clears throat> Nothing. Proceed with your witness, Mr. Russell. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to call William Lester to the stand, please. William Lester. Oh, talk to me. Who is he? Do you know him? Please, no more surprises. No, no, I've never seen him before in my life. Place your right hand on the Bible. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? So help me God. Please be seated. Would you tell the court your name, please? William Lester. Look, my friends call me Bill. Well, that's, that's nice. What's your line of work, Mr. Lester? I'm an investigator for the State Liquor Licensing Board. Do you ever freelance? Sir? Do you ever work outside of the State Bureau? We aren't supposed to. Well, that wasn't my question. Yes, I have. Have you ever done any work for Gabriel Medina? Objection. Overruled. Answer the question. Yeah, I'd done a job for her. Would you mind describing that job? Uh, she asked me to inspect this place called the Speakeasy. Well, that's what it used to be called. This is the place, the bar and restaurant that uh, Max Holden now owns. Yeah, that's the one. Mr. Lester, uh... Was this a personal favor or, um... Yeah, she paid me. She paid you? She paid you? What on earth did she pay you for? To turn in a bad report so that Max Holden would never get a liquor license. Mr. Lester, do you realize the implications of what you're saying? Yeah, I know, Judge. I'm just trying to come clean, you know? Mr. Holden, have you ever seen this man before? <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. On more than one occasion, he's come by to harass me. Uh, Your, Your Honor, <clears throat> may I request a slight recess? I'd like to speak with my client. I should think you would, Mr. Lovelace. I have a few questions for her myself. We'll break early for lunch and reconvene in two hours. Dumb lady. Very dumb. First you hire that sleaze and then you lie to me about it. Are you trying to lose this case single-handedly? How did you do that? A guy like Lester would never implicate himself. 
Well, Herb's been investigating him for a few months. He knew we were on to him, so we decided to uh, talk. He's also fingering a major underworld figure for Herb. Oh, this is the break we've been waiting for. Way to go, John. There's no way the judge can award out to Gabrielle, not after this. good to me and I can't turn him down. Besides, it's, it's only going to be for a few weeks. Okay, well, we'll try it till he gets back. All I ask is that you don't shortchange Sammy and me. I won't. But if I know I can do this, but in return, you've got to trust me. You've got to trust that I love you and Sammy and that I'm always going to put you guys first. Yeah, unless you get a better offer, right? <laughs> Santa... Lila, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Yes, you did. You're, you're trying to make things better, and all you do is just make them worse. Look, forget about what I just said. Can we try and talk about this? No, I'm really, I don't want to talk anymore. I've, I've talked enough. Sammy's got to go to school. She's late already. Sammy, come on, honey. It's time to go. Sammy? Sammy, come on, hon. We got to go. Ray, she's gone. What do you mean she's gone? Well, she couldn't have just taken off to... She heard us arguing, and she's run away. I'll find her. You gotta find her. Hurry. Nothing can happen to her. Hurry, Rachel. You're my baby. I ain't going anywhere until I find out what's wrong with Miss Sarah. I can tell when a woman's been hurt by a guy. Where I come from, we don't put up with that kind of stuff. Well, look, Wyatt Earp, I'd be the last guy in the world to hurt Sarah. Oh, yeah, that's what you say. Look, Austin, I'm trying to tell you what happened before. It was just... Well, you haven't changed a bit, have you? You're still ready to start a fight just like that. When you learn... How about yourself? All what right, about look, your look, string Scott, of broken you hearts? You, please. Austin, there has just been a misunderstanding, all right? Yeah, yeah, you can say that again. Bo is not the one who upset me. Austin. It's okay, Sarah. You don't have to protect him. Now, would you shut up and listen to her? Look, it's my father, okay, Austin? He's in the house, Rita. I was upset because I just finished visiting him. Oh, Sarah. I, I'm so sorry. I... I mean, can you ever forgive me for being such an idiot? Yeah. I don't think um, I'm the one that you misjudged, Austin. Oh, God. Cousin Bo. I, I'm sorry. I mean, it's, it's like I'm still in prison. I've got to learn to ask questions first and shoot later. Yeah. Well, you said it, Austin. I didn't. Hey. I'm sorry, cousin. I know I don't deserve this, but I'm just asking you if you could give me another chance here. Why not? Well, now that we have that solved, it's okay. Um, I wanted to show you a present that Austin gave me. A present? Well, actually, it's for Tugger. <laughs> See? Yeah, I figured now that he's sort of living in the lap of luxury, he, he should at least have a collar that's sort of like that. Cute, huh? Oh, well, that's the word. Well, listen, I really best be going now. I got, I got a whole bunch of errands to finish for Renee. Sarah, I, I, I'm real sorry about your dad, and if there's anything I can do, you just give me a call out of the bases. Okay? Thank you, Austin. Oh. You know, I wish you'd try and get along with him. He is your cousin, after all. I wish the same thing. But until he proves himself, cousin or not, I'm not going to turn my back on him. down the street, the playground. She was all by herself, going back and forth on the swing with Kristen. Is that why you ran away, so you could go play with your doll? I wasn't running away from home. I was running away from you and Daddy. Go on, hon. Tell your mom what you told me. You scared me. Oh, honey, we didn't mean to scare you. I'm sorry, go ahead. All you do is fight when I'm around. I thought if I went away, you'd stop fighting. So I took Kristen to the playground so no one could bother us. And so I wouldn't make anybody unhappy anymore. 
I tried to tell Sammy on the way back that she's not the cause of our fights. Sweetheart, we never fight about you. If it's not me, then why do you fight? Why? Well... Why? <laughs> you know, sometimes grown-ups just start fighting. They don't really know why, and after a while, it becomes a habit. A bad habit. Like the way Teddy Arnold chews with his mouth open? <laughs> Something like that. Except grown-ups are supposed to know better. Yeah. Then do what you make me do. Promise. Promise what, huh? That you won't fight anymore? I promise. I promise. Ah, oh, that's better. <laughs> um, go get my school books and I'll let you know. Okay. Let's get out of here. Treat you to lunch. What was celebrating? It's not over yet, Max. Be worried. After Lester's testimony, if Gabrielle had a defense, she shot up full of holes. I'm just too smart to be overconfident. You get over the look on her face when she ran out of here. No matter what she's done, she's still the mother of my child, and I hate doing this to her. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean, Max. When she ran out, I couldn't tell if she was mad as hell or just humiliated. Or both. You notice the look in her eyes from the moment she set foot in court? Yeah, I did. It was like she knew something the rest of us didn't. Yeah, I wonder what. All right, hell with it. Can't possibly save her now. Shared a great deal in Eterna. Shared? You and I? All of us. Pain and the hope, the good times and the bad, we all became like a family. That's the way I felt, but I thought you... But you thought I was only out for myself. I'm sorry if that's the way I made it look, but it, it wasn't accurate. I care about family more than you will ever know. Is that what you came to tell me? Well, my main concern was to see how you were doing. Have your doctors found an antidote yet? Antidote? Gabrielle, at this point, they don't even have a name for the poison. But I'm sure they'll find a cure very soon. Well, they're working night and day for all the good it's doing. But you mustn't give up hope. I'm certain, I'm absolutely certain that someone will come up with an answer very, very soon. The way you say that, it almost makes me believe it's true. But you must believe it. No matter how dark it gets, I know you're going to be all right. Thanks for the encouragement, Gabrielle. You're the last person I expected to drop by and cheer me up. It must be Eterna. Eterna? <laughs> well, it obviously had a profound effect on all of us. Oh, yes. I learned a great deal from Eterna. Mm -hmm still has much more to give. No, I'm sorry. No, never mind. Look, I don't want to tire you out by staying. I, I just wanted to tell you. Tell me what? It's all right. Mm. Never mind. You must believe everything's going to be all right. I promise you. Oh, Roger, please forgive me. I know your daughters mean the world to you, as my son means everything to me. I can only hope that one day you'll find it in your heart to understand what I'm about to do.
See what happens when we don't talk? When we don't listen. I'm, I'm sorry about the things that I've said. I'm sorry if I've hurt you. I'm sorry for not trusting you more. I really want to keep that promise I made to Sammy. I, I never want to fight with you again. It's a nice promise. I'd like to keep it, but let's face it, no matter how much we love each other, married couples are bound to have arguments. But, Rafe, that's all we've done lately. So much so that our daughter has become an innocent victim. Well, then it's time to call a truce. I love you, Delilah. I love your singing and your ambitions and everything about you. I love you too, Rafe, and I love that that you want me to put you and Sammy first. It shows me that you care. No secret about that. And you can have all the applause you want as as long as you still come home to us. You'll still have me. What do you think? <laughs> Is this you long enough? Oh, that's the best applause I've ever heard. Come here, you. <laughs> Boy, you'll do just about anything to get out of going to school, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> you silly. Sir, I'm really sorry that I lost it with my cousin just now. I think it was just a harmless misunderstanding. Well, I think I find it hard to believe that anything is harmless when it comes to Austin. Hey, you want to know something? Yeah. When you came to my rescue, I liked it. Even if it was a harmless misunderstanding. It made me feel safe and secure, and I really need to feel that way right now, especially with Dad. No, you, you know what? I think you need right now some lunch. Let's just go on in the restaurant. We'll order something special, and we'll just we'll take a break. We won't talk about Austin or hospitals. Nothing but us. I'll tell you, I'm so tired. I think I would just fall flat in my soup. What? The, don't order soup. Then. <laughs> no, look, come on. It's still early, and you're your sleepyhead. I'll tell you what. Why don't I take you over to my new place and show you around? I'm exhausted, Bo. Really, I'm just going to go take a nap, I think. No, but you see, you don't understand. The room that I want to show you is the bedroom. And I'm going to be good, too. I promise. You just go in, you take a nap. I'll stand guard at the door. I won't let anybody bother you. I'm really into this uh, Lancelot stuff, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Your armor's a little rusty, but what the heck? The spirits are there. So what do you say? Come on. OK. Why don't you? Uh... Bring your trusty steed around. My trusty steed is parked right out in the front. Just have to what are you doing? get what are you past doing? the dragon oh. or two. Oh. oh, my God. No, you, you said you have to conserve your energy, and I want to feel like Rhett, but. Frankly, my dear, I give a damn. <laughs> You can't wait for the hearing to begin. Actually, I was just sitting here wishing for the stop for this bloodshed. I'm not enjoying this, not a minute of it. Listen, during the recess, I'm doing a little bit of thinking. And I just want you to know that I did not want this kind of a fight. And now that we're in the middle of it, I want nothing more than to stop it. It's very interesting you should bring that up now. They don't believe me? Well, it's true. No matter what you've done, I... I felt more sadness than anger for you when you were up on that stand. I really don't need pity from you. This not is now. not pity! I just want you to know that when you decided to start this fight, you left me with no choice but to counterpunch as hard as I could an eye for an eye, that's a wonderful way to... It doesn't to do. have to be that way. I'm glad that we have the chance to talk alone. Just want you to know what I've decided, that when the judge awards me custody of Al, I want to give you liberal visitation rights. You can see him whenever you want. It's best for him, it's best for all of us. That's a lovely speech. But I think it's a little premature. Judge Tipton isn't going to award Al custody with you. <laughs> 
<laughs> I know this isn't easy, but you better face it. After what happened on that stand, you don't stand I a chance. I know things look very dismal for me now, but I'm certainly going to come around my way. You got that look in your eyes again, Gabriel. What's going on? What do you know that I don't? It's very simple. You're going to refuse the custody of Al. <laughs> I'm what? You heard me. When the hearing resumes, you're going to tell the judge that you've had a change of heart. That you think that Al should be living with me because that is what is best for everyone. Uh, I knew you were upset, but I didn't think you were insane. No, I'm more sane now than I've ever been. I'm giving you a choice, Max. You can take it or leave it. Roger Gordon's life for my son.